we will talk about scanning probe microscopy, about carbon-based materials, and about Moore's law, production of transistors. Scanning tunneling microscopy, it is the first technique. And basically it is a combination of tunneling, chemical tunneling that you know from quantum mechanics, together with a very, very, very sharp tip, it is atomically sharp, and piezo elements. So you know piezo materials from your, your lighter. If you light your gas stove, you have piezoelectric element that can make a spark if you bend it. But you can also do the reverse. If you put a potential on a piezoelectric material, it can move. And with that, you can make it move extremely small distances. So the, the distance control is made by piezoelectric elements. And in that way, you can visualize atoms by using these three components in the scanning tunneling microscope. And basically, here we see a wave function that tunnels through a barrier, a finite barrier, and ends up at the other side. So that's the tunneling. And this barrier basically is the medium between the, the tip and the surface. So basically there can be vacuum, and then you have a very high barrier for the electron to move. So in that way, there's a, a current between a tip and a surface, and tunnel current is, has an exponential uh, relation to distance. The Z here is the distance between the tip and the surface. And this kappa is distance dependence factor. So for vacuum, it's 2.2 per angstrom. So there's an exponential term here that changes 2.2 per angstrom. In that way, you can visualize on an atomic scale, you can visualize molecules, and that is uh, important. <laughs> uh, this is a slide, I stole it from somebody from IBM, there was a course and these slides were available. So it is, well they call it a triple axis computer controlled piezo ceramic robot. And you see this is the needle, it is, it is atomically sharp, for the rest it looks well, a little bit like a sewing machine, but this is what it does. So you put a potential between the surface and the tip and you measure the current. So you need conductive materials and you keep the tunnel current, you keep it constant. So there's a feedback loop. So here we see the tip, the tip is atomically sharp. And here we see a surface with what we call an add atom. So there's one atom lying on an atomically flat surface. If you put the needle close to the surface, there can be a, a current, a current between the tip and the surface. And then you start scanning the tip over the surface. So you, like in Dutch, they call it raster tunnel of microscopy. They have a feedback loop to keep the current constant. In that way, you make lines over a surface. And if there's an atom, then suddenly the, the needle has to move up more for the current to remain constant. So in that way, you make a grid of lines and that you can visualize. So that is the visualization of an atom on a surface, on an atomically flat surface. So this is the scanning tunneling microscope. At IBM, they have been working on that and positioning atoms like Feynman thought about. The ideas of Feynman were realized and this is I think it is uh, copper atoms on an iron surface. And it's like an atomic stadium, an atomic football stadium. You also see that these atoms, they change the properties within this area because there's different wave pattern. The wave pattern on this part of the surface is influenced by this ring of atoms. But they were able to position atoms where they want with this microscope. So they can pick up atoms and put them down. Here you see the process, which of course can take an extremely long time. And it was also done at very low temperature. So here we see the makeup of a circle, positioned atoms in a row, 
becomes bigger and bigger and here it's full circle. So they make a circle of atoms on a surface and here you also see the wave pattern. So the, the properties of this part of the surface, they actually change. That is scanning tunneling microscopy. So you can visualize on the atomic scale and you can position atoms as you want. There's also a picture where they have written IBM with atoms. Okay, this is nanotechnology because people sell these instruments. They sell the needles. One needle, one atomically sharp needle is like 70 euros. So that you can make a lot of money with that. Okay, in science, it has become very popular to do these kind of spectroscopies or microscopies. Another application of these principles, this is millipedes. So IBM, again, they uh, continued with this invention that got the Nobel Prize, and they made an array. So here we see one tip. The tip is on a little holder, and then they made an array of tips, and here we see 4,096 of these tips on a surface of 4.6 millimeters. So they've made a millipede, a, an element with loads and loads of little, little needles at the bottom that they can address individually. So the idea was to use that for memory storage so that the needles could make little holes into, for instance, a polymer and with resistive heating, close them again. So it was, the idea was to make it as a storage medium. Unfortunately, the electronics to control these uh, millipedes, these, these uh, AFM tips, the electronics was bigger than your camera. Practically, it was not possible to make it a product, but it did work and currently, they use it to test their lithographic structures. They use the needles to test if the computer chips have the right lithography, if they don't have mistakes, faults. So in that way, uh, it is still used, this millipede from IBM. But as a product, it did not enter the market. As a consequence of the development of scanning tunneling microscopy, there have been a lot of other microscopies derived from it. For instance, what do you do if your sample is not conductive? Well, then you cannot put this current through it, but you can do the same principle with a needle, you can approach it, and then you can basically feel the attractive forces between the atoms of the tip and the surface. So that's what we call AFM, atomic force microscopy. And here we see an example. Here you have again this, this uh, this tip, it is looking like this. And basically you determine the position of the tip very, very accurately with a laser with reflection, laser reflection on the tip with a position sensitive diode. It tells you about whether this thing is moving or not. And there's also, uh, sometimes they make the, the needle have a certain uh, frequency of vibration and that can also change. That's the, the phase modulation. So in that way, you can also do microscopy on the atomic scale with uh, substrates that are not conductive. Okay, this is one AFM of molecules on mica. So these little stripes here, they are molecules consisting of these, of these spiraling molecules. And they are like uh, 600 centimeter long. FM, you can probe molecular organization as well. And in this case, there was a solvent effect. So if you use a different solvent, these stripes are thinner. Don't ask me why. But another thing is that if you take an AFM microscope and you drill a little hole in the needle, then you can put light through. So with the same principle, you can make a picture of the emission of materials. So this is the AFM picture. And on the right, it is the emission of the material. We have scanning tunneling microscopy. We have AFM, but we also have SNOM, which is near foot optical. So you can measure the emission, the luminescence of a surface uh, on a very, very small 
scale. A later development of these techniques is non-contact AFM. So maybe you have seen a picture like this in the newspaper. So it is 2009 and it's still IBM. If you put a molecule at the end of the tip, in this case it is, I think it's a CO, uh, carbon monoxide molecule, then you can obtain even better resolution with AFM type technique, so non-conductive. So here we have a pentacene molecule, and this is the picture obtained with microscopy. So you can really, you can see the, the, the rings, the aromatic rings. So you can visualize on the molecular level with extremely good detail. And this is an impression of such a, such a material. So here we have an, a surface. The surface has to be atomically flat. So it has to be very, very well defined. And here we see a molecule and it is probed with an other molecule that's hanging from the tip. So non-contact AFM. And here we see a comparison. So here we see uh, the same material with scanning tunneling microscopy. So you can see the molecules, but it's basically blobs. Here we have atomic force microscopy, AFM. And here we have this new non-contact AFM. So you can really see the molecules, the, the benzene rings. And here you see even some connection between the molecules. So these are the hydrogen bonds. And this is a picture of the molecules on top of the measured structure. So here we see such an emit molecule, a naphthalene emit. Here we see the hydrogen bonds. And well, if you look closely, then every now and then there seems to be even interaction between a CH bond and for instance, this, uh, this carbonyl here. Well, people are looking at the interaction of molecules and it appears that sometimes there are additional interactions that you would maybe would not expect. But this is visualization at the atomic scale. And you can also do this with magnetism. So magnetic force microscopy, you can probe the magnetic properties of a material on the nanoscale. And this is important for hard drives for your computer. So the smaller the stripes of the material, the higher the density of the information storage can be. So here we see a smaller and smaller pattern going from a thousand nanometer, 65 nanometer to a pattern of 33 nanometers. So if you can make patterns of magnetic materials with the 33 change of magnetism, then you can make a very good hard drive. So magnetic force microscopy also, of course, electron microscopy has, has developed a lot. So you can, uh, it has in, been improved more and more to visualize on the atomic scale. An electron microscope, of course, works with electrons. These are, I think, some animals from the sea with micros electron microscopy visualized. Electron microscopy does have an advantage because you can really make a, a large overview and then zoom in. With STM and AFM, you, can, you only start with a very, very small area of your surface. You cannot zoom out all the way. You can also have a large contrast and you can also determine other properties. So for instance, you can have the area where you probe with your electron microscope, it can also give uh, a visible light or you can get other uh, X-ray scattering. So it can also give information on the elements. If you make an electron microscopy picture, you can also do ADUX and then you can get the information on the elements that are present in your layer. So that is electron microscopy. Well, why not a microscopy with Röntgen, well, because that is different, difficult for the lenses, but people are working on that. Röntgen uh, microscopes. If you make a nanostructured material, you can use these kinds of microscopy to visualize the surface on an atomic scale. 
and you can even look at the magnetism, at the optical properties, 